Hello and welcome to this channel and in this video you are going to talk about space internet and how the space internet works. So before we begin make sure you guys subscribe to our channel and like this video for more videos like this in the future. Firstly why it is necessary to launch satellites in order to provide internet services. As necessity is the mother of all inventions this is mainly to ensure that reliable and uninterrupted internet services now part of humanity's basic infrastructure and an important means of delivering a wide variety of public services to the world's people are universally available in every part of the globe. Currently about 4 billion people more than half the world population do not have access to reliable internet networks and that is because the traditional ways to deliver the internet, fiber optic cables or wireless networks cannot take it everywhere on earth. In many remote areas or places with difficult terrain, it is not possible or viable to set up cables or mobile towers. Signals from satellites in space can overcome these obstacles easily. So uh, how old is the idea of space internet? Space-based internet systems have in fact been in use for several years now but only for a small number of users. Also, most of the existing systems use satellites in geostationary orbit. This orbit is located at a height of 36,000 km over the Earth's surface directly above the equator. Satellites in this orbit move at speeds of about 11,000 km per hour and completed one revolution of the Earth in the same time that the Earth rotates once on its axis. To the observer on the ground, therefore a satellite is geostationary orbit, appears stationary. So, how will placing satellites in lower orbits will help? One big advantage of beaming signals from geostationary orbit is that the satellite can cover a very large part of the Earth. Signals from one satellite can cover roughly a third of the planet and three to four satellites will be enough to cover the entire Earth. Also, because they appear to be stationary, it is easier to link to them. But satellites in geostationary orbit also have a major disadvantage. The internet is all about transmission of data in real time. However, there is a time lag called latency between a user seeking data and the server sending that data. And because data transfers cannot happen faster than the speed of light, they take place at significantly lower speeds. The longer the distance, the needs to be covered is greater than the time lag or the latency. In space-based networks, data requests travel from user to the satellite and are then directed to data centers on the ground. The results then make the same journey in the reverse direction. A transmission like this form a satellite in geostationary orbit has a latency of about 600 milliseconds. A satellite in the lower orbit, say around 200 to 2000 km from the Earth's surface can bring the lag down to 20 to 30 milliseconds, roughly the time it takes for terrestrial system to transfer data. But lower orbits have their own problem. Going to their lower height, their signals cover a relatively small area. As a result, many more satellites are needed to, in order to reach signals to every part of the planet. Additionally, satellites in these orbits travel at more than double the speed of satellites in geostationary orbit, say around 27,000 km per hour, to balance the effects of gravity. Typically, they go around the Earth once every few hours. To compensate for the fact they cannot be seen from a terrestrial location for more than a few minutes, many more satellites are needed to the networks so that there are no breaks in the transmission of data. That is the reason why the Starlink network is talking about 42,000 satellites. So Starlink aims to start service in the northern United States and Canada in 2020 and expand to cover the whole world by 2021. The current plan is to deploy satellites into constellations of around 4,400 and 7,500 launches, 60 satellites at a time, will take place at frequent intervals now onward. SpaceX says it can start services on a small scale once 400 satellites join the network. Several other private companies to have plans for space-based internet service. These include Amazon, OneWave, and O3B, each involving large constellations of satellites in lower and middle earth orbits but these projects are very small compared to Starlink. Once operational, space-based internet networks are expected to change the face of internet services such as autonomous car driving are to be revolutionized. 
and the Internet of Things can be integrated into virtually every household, whether urban or rural. Is there a downside of this projection? Three issues have been flagged increased space debris, increased risk of collisions, and the concern of astronomers that these constellations of space internet satellites will make it difficult to observe other space objects and to detect their signals. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye.